Today I'm going to be painting a damaged pewter teapot and the sugar container that went with it. It looks like these were dropped or something at some point in time. This is from an estate that we recently picked up and both of them have damaged bottoms where they're a little bit caved in. And so they're clearly not really good for resale. I am going to use Fusion's Peony to paint these and my Klingon S30 brush. And of course, one of the things I love about painting with Fusion is that it is a primer, color, and top coat all in one. So I'll only need to do two coats on this teapot and it will be complete. And it's gonna stick to this metal just fine. I allowed the Fusion to dry all the way so that it would not peel off of the pot when I added a transfer. I am going to use Redesign with Prima's classic labels transfer in the cafe here and it's so simple to use this particular one has about 30 maybe more of these uh, sort of vintage label designs it gives you the stick you just rub it on and then lift the plastic if at any point in time you lift it and it hasn't transferred you just lay it right back down and finish rubbing until it is applied and while Fusion doesn't require any kind of top coat, the transfers, it is recommended. So in this case, I'm gonna use some DIY paints, clear wax, and just give this a nice soft wax. And it really does soften the finish on this piece. So I'm glad I did. You just rub it on, and then with a clean dry cloth, you'll just wipe it off and buff it in. To finish this one off, I added a shabby bow and some florals. And with the smaller one, I added a B transfer and some greenery inside. Let me know what you think. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. Okay, truth be told, I did this one before Valentine's Day and just never seemed to make it to video. But I had this galvanized heart in my factory already and so all I did was give it a light cleaning to make sure there were no oils on it and then I decided I would um, tape off the uh, top to make sure I didn't get anything on that rope. Now I'm gonna paint this fully using my Klingon S30 again, and I am using the color DIY paint in tarnished pearl. Now I wanna add a soft blend. So I'm gonna start off by doing another nice full coat of the tarnished pearl across the entire face. Using DIY paint and the color Cowgirl Coral, I'm gonna go ahead and border this heart. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna just gently blend the tarnished pearl and the Cowgirl Coral along so that the heart has a darker pinky corally outline and a little bit lighter white in the middle. You will need a misting bottle to achieve this, and you'll also wanna be sure that if the colors get too muddy, that you use a paper towel or a clean dry cloth and just wipe off some of the colors. The goal here is just to blend these together, and I am also um, using a clean brush and I'm swirling around the outside in to uh, sort of lessen the effects of the darker color on the edge. This is a great way to do some beginner's blending if you are not a seasoned blender. After I've blended the heart the way that I wanted to, I'm gonna go ahead and use DIY Paints Liquid Patina to add a top coat. The reason being is that DIY paint in the clay base formula needs a top coat, but also I'm going to be adding transfers and I want to be sure that they do not have that powdery finish behind them, causing them sometimes to lift in the process. I want to be sure that this has got a nice sealed top coat and that it is very dry and not cool to the touch. Now, I live in Florida, and I admit I have been jonesing to use these flamingos since they came out, but I've never had quite the right project. I thought this would be a real fun one, 
and it would be a little bit unexpected for this specific transfer. Okay, so I wanted to do a voiceover on this part while I'm actually laying it out. So my goal here was not to do I love yous and all of that, but to have a uniquely Floridian heart um, in the Pantone color of the year or semi close to it with the, um, the coral cowboy at, or cowgirl. Um, so what I'm going to do here is have my flamingos basically make a heart in the middle and then I'm going to layer these palms to go around the outside so that it creates the heart around it. And that is my plan for this heart. Let's get to transferring. Because I have a curved edge on this piece, and it feels like there are so many pieces that are going in to a very small area, I have decided to tape these down. It feels like that'll help me to stay just a little bit more organized and make sure that the beaks actually create the heart shape that I want. Whenever you're using transfers on a curved surface, be sure to start in the middle and work your way out. Try to keep things as together as possible, working your way across it versus going from the outside to the inside. And that will eliminate cracks and tears and breaks because, you know, curved surfaces um, often bunch up. After I have all of my flamingo and um, leaves transferred properly, then I'm gonna go ahead and give this a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. I do not want this to be a bright polished look, so I'm actually gonna sand it down a little bit and make it look a little bit more aged. I am not a big fan of like super bright, so I wanna take this down just a little bit. And after we have that done, then we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna use DIY paint top coat. Um, this is gonna be the liquid patina again, and just give it a nice thorough coat for top coat. Let me know what you think about this Floridian Valentine's. I know it's like almost Mother's Day now, but <laughs> I guess better late than never on getting this project actually up to video. Have you heard of whatnot.com yet? It's actually an app where that you can download and we do quick live auctions for a variety of things. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can come out, check out some of our shows. But in the meantime, here's a little preview. This will make John so happy. Yeah, for those who are just joining us, these are original turns by my husband when he first started wood turning. And if you haven't seen his work now, you should follow him at word tur wood turning by John on YouTube, he does a great job. Much better on recycled by Marie. So if you're interested in picking up some cool finds, be sure to join us over there. Look for the link in the description. Here I've got an assortment of either made candlesticks from wood spindles that we cut up or actual purchased thrifted candlesticks. And I am gonna use these square bases that I picked up from Michaels and these round pieces that I bought online. And I'm gonna use DIY paint in the color Apothecary to paint all of these. They're all different style, but by painting with the same color, then I'm able to achieve a good cohesive look. We did these before Diamond D Market, and believe it or not, virtually all of them sold on the first day. And even though, again, they may look different by coordinating all of them with the same paint job, they feel more cohesive and people brought them in um, multiples each time. DIY paint is a clay-based paint and it makes it easy to wet distress or to sand down. I typically prefer using sandpaper over the wet distress technique, but it really depends on what I'm working on. Either way, it is a job that is quickly done and I love using this paint. After everything has been painted, I'm again gonna use DIYs, clear wax, and a stencil brush or a small wax brush and give these all a good clear wax. This is going to adjust the color a little bit. So the darker the color, I'll say the bigger freak out factor you may have because this is a nice light color, it is not as obvious of the color change. To make these feel a little bit more modern, 
I have gone ahead and painted the squares that are going to be at the bottom in the color vintage linen. And often I will stain these, but honestly, I feel like for spring, the, the warm white was a better option. Here is a look at the grouping altogether with some greener. We sell the greenery on our website also, so be sure to check out vintagebedesign.com and let me know your feedback. I know all of these projects are a little bit old, but we are working on some more recent ones with Market and some of the changes that have happened here at the company and a lot of whatnot shows. We are just a little bit behind, but I promise I will get back to my weekly schedule of dropping new videos every Sunday at 10 a.m.